hostess and host to all these people that are going to be here visiting because we could spend every dollar we've got in the bank on advertising and it wouldn't even make a dent to what the word of mouth will make when these people are here visiting. Exactly. And he can tell you that's God's honest truth. We went to uh, Severeville's uh, Jeep Quest and we were lucky that we acquired several of their vendors that were down there. And when we told them what we were charging for them to set the vendors, they're like, are you serious? Is that the whole, the whole thing? Yeah. And they're like, well, when they told me how much they charged them for one day to set up, I thought they was going to pick me up off the floor. You know, they charge $500 for them to set up. So of course my measly 40 bucks for two days, they're in all. So we've got people now so that you are coming. Up more vendors? Yes, right. we've got people coming from Nashville. I've got one that's coming all the way from Texas that makes actual Jeep jewelry. It's all handmade. And it's everything from earrings to necklaces to bracelets to actual jewelry for your Jeep. Well, I mean, it's the neatest thing ever was. I've been waiting all my life for some Jeep jewelry. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> they can make everything custom. I mean, it's just amazing. And uh, you know we have a we have a little group coming on the other side of Nashville. They actually make uh, what they call kickback mirrors for jigs and trucks. They, they call them kickback mirrors. Uh -huh. They're actually they go down in your pins. Like if you take your doors off your Jeep or off of your uh, your like your XJs or whatever, and you take you put these down in your hinges, and they have a mirror on them so that it keeps your vehicle legal. They make all kinds of things like that, and they powder coat them to match your vehicle. So they're coming out of on the other side of Nashville. We've got one that's coming from Texas, some from Georgia. So we're extremely excited because we were able to pick up several more vendors. How many vendors do you have total now? Uh, I've probably got out of state. I've got about 15 if they all show up. 15 from out of state. 15 from out of state. Then I've got several locals from Pikeville to Ashland to uh, Cupland, Ohio. You know, and then several local. So we're extremely excited, and if everybody shows up that has says they're going to, we will have over 200 Jeeps, 200 which is great for a first-time Jeep Jam event. Mm -hmm. It will be our second poker run, but it will be on our first Jeep Jam. So we're extremly excited, and the KSP guy that I've been working with, he's he's new to everything, so I've just kind of had to pick up a little bit of slack and take the ball and run with it. That's William Petrie. Yes, and he's, we, a he, he, he's a great guy, but he is just extremely overwhelmed. And like I told him, you know, I, I totally understand. So um, in, in using both the, the high school and middle school campus, if it all works out, we should have a huge, huge event. And like I told him this morning, the only thing that I'm worried about is getting the word out. Because um, EKBTD has not gotten back with me or him, so we're a little concerned. I reached out to them again and today. They help with that? They have reassured me that they're going to contact me okay. back, so I'm hoping with that. Um, does anybody know a contact with like Q95 or somewhere like that, where we know get a hold of somebody? To that would be yeah. I work there. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I, I, I put the the Jeep Jam on there last week to, to announce it in the news. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I know that Mr. Petrie uh, thought he was doing a good thing, but he had missed several of my meetings because he had been so busy, and he accidentally run the wrong flyer in the newspaper, and they've been so gracious to say, we're so sorry, we are going to make you a makeup run, and they're supposed to, I, believe, I think it's supposed to be a tomorrow's paper, if all goes well. In High School Herald. Yeah, High School Herald. Uh, so that'll be corrected, and then of course, you know, Adam Priest has been wonderful about getting it on uh, WSIP and, and doing a live remote there with him on WKLW. And it's just promote, promote, promote. Is he going to do live, live feed from there? That's what we're hoping. Good, if cool. all goes well, we're hoping. And I told him, I said, that, that would help us better than anything, I think. You know, it would. And That'd be as awesome. long as the weather does well and cooperates, I think we're going to have a huge, huge turnout. Tell us about your music. There's downtown, downtown <laughs> Brian Brown. We, uh, on Friday, we are going to have the Kentucky Junior Opry Pros. They are That's going on to come, June the 8th. Yes, on the 8th. We're going to have the Kentucky Junior Opry Pros are going to come, and they're going to play from uh, 4 to 6, and from 6 to 8, I have Jason Goble coming. And then on uh, Saturday, I have um, Johnny Burchett coming, and he's going to play the whole entire time, because we thought we had one more person that was going to fill in, but they've had something to come up and can't make it. So he's going to do all four hours for me on and off on Saturday when we do our couple run and return. Um, you know, they when I reach out and, and just kind of contact, I said, look, it's a, it's a two-split charity event. You know, they were all over it. They were tickled to death to help. So we were just thrilled. I mean, I was speechless. 
the Kentucky Opera Crows actually came to me and I was like, wow, I must be important or something, you know. <laughs> I was not expecting that, so it tickled me to death. They're extremely excited. We would like to have our trail town table there. Yes, yes, and sell please. our raffle tickets for uh -huh. the, yeah. the okay. kayaks. Please, 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 yes, please. Do we need to uh, uh, contribute a vendor fee or can we? You can wait yours because I'm going to need your help. I know. <laughs> we're, 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 we're there. We're I'm we're getting there. to this. Um, you know, when we plan this and we put this together, a lot of my jeepers thought, you know, I can get off work, I can be there Friday and help you out. You know, Saturday's not a problem. We don't work on Saturdays or whatever. Well, we kind of run into a concrete wall. It There's happens. only like four of us that's actually going to be available on Friday, and that is not enough people to do what needs to be done on it Friday. Happens. That's what we run into so, all the time. Is okay, that, yes. And every every volunteer organization in our area runs into the same problem is, is maintaining volunteers to get things done. Yes. It's hard. Everybody and their brother has got a hundred commitments to different we things. We need a community organization that is solely in the business of volunteers. Yes. That place is absolutely. Even our volunteer, our volunteer, why are you going to cheat? He is. He's going to talk about it here in just a second. Our even our volunteer chairperson can be here tonight because she said that um, okay. was at a ball game with her kids. <laughs> so I mean, you know, it's it is not unique to your situation. It's something we all deal with. It's really really hard because people have so much going on. They do. So they do. Uh, don't feel like it's, it's some kind of a slant to your your event because it's not right. The right. best the best events it's hard to get volunteers. Well, I had told Danny we went to uh, last weekend on the 19th was National Topless Day. So of course, as idiots did, we all went topless, and of course that brought us got soaked and wet. I had about four inches of water in my jeep, but I said, hey, that's the point of National Topless Day. I uh, got the down there to their jeep jam. And I felt so sorry for him because he was one person doing everything. Yeah. And I'm like, you can't do this. And I mean, he was miserable. So I, you know, something wet or not, I jumped right in. I said, hey, let me do something for you. Let me help you. Now I got, I got to say, look, unless you cloned yourself lately, you ain't got this. I'm volunteering my time. Take advantage of it, please. So, you know, we pitched in and we just kind of helped him out a little bit. And he was very gracious and very thankful. And, you know, he was like, Ideal to help us make it more successful next year. I said the first thing you need to do, either clone yourself or get some volunteers because you're only one person. Yeah. And you know that was his big thing, but they had a great hit. This was their second year. They had 117 Jeeps, which is phenomenal, especially with pouring down rain. You know that had that. that was in Ashland at Glockner's. And they had a great turnout. Um, their music was a little off the wall, but I <laughs> some people like it off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> they, a lot of people ended up leaving early, you know, the music was more than they could handle. But overall it was a nice you know, they had a nice turnout and they had a nice seat. So you're so. expecting fifteen out of state vendors. Mm -hmm. So the, are those people staying here in town? Yes, they are staying in the hotels. They will be here. They took advantage they of the deal in. that they gave them here. Yes. That's cool. They're they are coming cool. in on Thursday. They will not be leaving until uh, late Sunday evening. That's that's so, kind of you know they're right going to be here. They're going to be staying in the motels, of eating, course, eating, buying stuff. Stuff. Yes. And we'll all be yes. looking at them and smiling and, and I have So them. many of them that are so hyped and excited because not only are they Jeep vendors, but they actually own Jeeps themselves, and they are so excited. And and that's all I heard about Saturday, and they, they were cracking me up. I said, "You think they've never been in the woods before?" But that's all I heard. You know, I can't wait. Give me an idea of what it's going to look like. How long is it going to take? Please tell me it's all day. And I'm like, okay, go down. <laughs> that is cool. That's so cool. they were hyped and excited, and I think it's going to be a great turnout. I really do. I'm, I'm excited. Really like I said, uh, folks, it, word, of mouth, word 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 of mouth. Because this is a charity event, um, you know, they're, they don't have limitless amounts of money to spend on advertising they don't have it so we have to that's not where we come in as as partners in these events with these people and promote our trails is that we're running that job constantly about this is going on and how cool this is and how many people this is bringing in and how this is growing our economy and and, and more than that once we get them here it's treating them like we value them being here because we do our future depends on them enjoying themselves and not just enjoying jeeps but enjoying everything that this region has to offer so when they're here 
Um, I said I wasn't going to talk about the regional thing, but I am going to talk about the regional thing, is we have to get past, um, I live in this city, I live in this community, and this is the only one I care about. We've got to get past that. We need to uh, be entertaining these people and talking to them while they're here and saying, hey, we've got all this stuff to do within five miles, but within 15 or 20 miles, there's 10 times more to do, and in 50 miles, there's 100 more times of things to do because that's what's going to bring people here. When they come, they see all this, they go back, they tell their families. Each person has an exponential reach that is amazing, and we have to be taking advantage of that because we don't have dollars to pour into advertising. We have a, a basically mouth. poor economy, so we got to do the word of mouth, and we have to do uh, our promotion by action. We have to be uh, making sure when they go home, they went home with a positive experience. And it did feel good that when we were down there, this guy approached us because Danny had actually entered his Jeep into their show contest. And this guy was walking by and he just did something. He goes, whoa! He's like, man, that's the Jeep I saw on, on that Facebook thing. And he was from like, Utah? And I'm like, whoa, he traveled that far. That's pretty awesome. And I saw one was from Canada. Yes, and then the next thing you know, People start coming and talking to us. Hey, did we saw you on Facebook. That's pretty cool. And I'm like, whoa, it's getting out there. So if you see our ad on there, please share it. Please share, 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 share. share it as far as you can share it. Have your friends share it. The more I share with all 15 and my friends. Josh has awesome. got 16. He's going to share with his. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's what it they're, they're all sitting in here. Yeah, they're all here. <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's what's going on with Jeep Jam, and that's June 8th and 9th and 10th. And that is on the campus of Johnson Central and Middle School. Yes. Uh, share it, like it, invite people to come down and attend, invite people to go down and, and meet these vendors and their guests and uh, make them feel welcome. That's what, what our job is in this. And if you can volunteer, any of your time during those three days, see Miss Connie and tell her what you what you have to offer as far as <coughs> your, your volunteering skills. And there's her main man. There comes true. We found That's me. the main man. We're done talking about Jeep Jam now, buddy. That's all right. Are you okay. still week two? Uh huh. Well, thank goodness. So, <laughs> the, the whole thing that we, we talk about with Trail Town is um, encouraging everybody in the community to be proactive <coughs> with ideas. And uh, this dude back here behind me is listening and doing. And uh, come over here where they can see you real good. Tell them what you got going on. Introduce well, yourself because they don't want everybody to know you. I'm Josh Castle. Uh, so right now I've started a new Facebook group. Uh, it's kind of a catch-all for everything going. And if you've got a event on Facebook, I can share that. It's kind of in its infancy right now, but it's been up three days. We've already got 50 members in it. And, uh, I think I've already added you. It's uh, okay. East Kentucky Outdoor Adventures. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So we're using it as a catch-all to push the Trail Town events, push any outdoor events. Uh, we've had people from Grayson already posting stuff on there. Good deal. Uh, Good deal. And we're doing events because every weekend I'm out there. I'm running a trail, doing something. So I'm making events. Uh, I think we've got a thing planned for June the 16th to go to Red River Gorge, just an easy hike down there. Um, we're going to try to start pushing forward events. <laughs> I have a cliff down the Red River Gorge that I teach people to repel. So oh, yeah. You all can come there and repel. But, Excellent. Uh, the 17th is when we're doing ours. So that's the Sunday? That's on Sunday. Yeah. Well, it's, you're going to do it on Sunday. Yeah. Oh. That's when the Outfitters is going to be available. That just sound like yeah, it's going to be a great weekend. I spent 30 years in the Red River Gorge hiking. Oh, I love it. So we can go to Brian's and repel. I built my own place down there, so I bought my own cliff, which is called Ash Cave. Okay. It's an ancient rock shelter, and uh, just a perfect place to repel because you can just drive right up there. There it is. Nice. You don't have to walk to the miles. I've also been kind of studying around the area looking for caves. Uh, uh, I, I, she, she can help you. Like, you guys can do that. <laughs> trying to get that started. So uh, if you know, if you have Facebook, just follow follow the group. And if you have anything to contribute, go ahead. And we just want 
everybody to participate. And it's more about changing the mentality, get people out there and want to do this, get engaged. And not just here. Notice that their first organized event is going out to the gorge. And where that's important, same thing as what we just said with the Jeep thing, it's word of mouth. Mm -hmm. You go down there, you're networking with people that are from other areas, you're down there enjoying that, you're talking to them about what you got at home to do. Yes. So the next time that you have, we have a hike here at home, he's met people out in the courts that are like, oh, hey, I want to go to Johnson County and hike around. Let's go see what they got. It's kind of a trail. It's a, trail. a, of it's a like huge, huge there. community. You just got to get them together. It takes interaction. Uh -huh. Yeah, especially if you're doing a, a, a new or kayak thing, they're 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 willing to come. Oh yeah, they're gonna come mm -hmm. check it out. I've got some friends over there from the Red River Gorge will come here probably on that kayak. So when your event again? Sixteenth of June. And what's the name of the page? One more time. It's uh, East Kentucky Outdoor Adventures. And it's the 16th, and do you have you, is hiking in the gorge? Yeah, it's going to be an easy trail. We're going to kind of start letting everybody get a feel for it. And... Okay. So y'all get on there, like that page, share that page, talk about Which that page. Whittleton Arch. Whittleton? Yep. Are you going from the campground or from Tunnel Ridge Road? We're going to go from Tunnel Ridge down and go to the arch. And I've, back I've been that way both ways and found the cave down there, too. There's a cave down I've been in the cave. It doesn't have any formations, but yeah. You know. I figure start with an easy hike, take people off trail a little bit, show yeah. them some of the rock shelters back in there. Yeah. I used to hike in there a lot in the wintertime. Yeah, you can find a lot more animals <laughs> down there. Yeah. So everybody, jungle. <laughs> everybody get engaged with this page. Like it and share it. No, no. Try if you can if you can get away at all, get down there. Um is can you get on the page and share your information on there, post yeah, on there yeah, about the repelling? I'll put it about the ash cave repelling. Yeah, okay. and that, yeah, that gives them one more option to do while they're there. Yep. And uh, like I said, the more people we engage down there, we can be talking about here. Okay. Come see us. <laughs> we got some stuff that's going and, on. And where I'm at, at ash cave, that's where all the Jeep people, the ones that actually get their Jeeps dirty. Yeah. They do <laughs> You know, they got the straps. The dirty jeepers. And they tip over and all that. So. Well, we're kind of in the middle between them yeah. and us. Yeah. They go down that road. That's how they're from East Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, they got them strictly <laughs> off-road jobs. Oh, uh, yeah. There. Yeah, I mean, I've seen them crash. I've seen the doors fly off. We've got to get ours back home. And then they were driving up and said, we're that we tell them looks dangerous. I said, are you kidding? We saw you guys flipping and doors coming off. I said, <laughs> that's a brand new road. Repelling's easy, man. They all have those stickers on the dash that says, remember, stupid, you got to drive me home. <laughs> All right, so then we got some other folks in our regulars. Tell us what. Tell us about what you got. What's your vision? What do you see happening? What do you see going on? What do you want going on? I'm not used to being on the spot. Oh, no. <laughs> Pretend you're not. And he's he's just he's just standing up there holding that because that's what he does. So you're not really like I forgot he was there. there honestly. Huh? I forgot he was standing over here. Yeah. So there you go. So I just act like he's not there. Tell everybody who you are first. I'm Wayne Stambo. Okay, Sambo. And Katie. That's his better. And a prettier head. And a prettier. Uh, I think that a lot of the community can come together with the trails and Jeep Club and like even the gearheads. Oh, absolutely. And everybody come together and have a big conglomeration to promote Paintsville, basically. And also, they can get out with like, like y'all did the ride with the bunch from Ohio. I'm, I'd say they'll be, some of them will be down here for the... Oh yeah, we've, oh, yeah. we've got multiple Jeep clubs coming. We've got uh, three out of Ohio, two out of uh, Ashland. Um, we've, I've got uh, two Jeep clubs coming from Tennessee that's bringing Jeepers up. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got, we've got several coming. And then everybody knows Kelly. And everybody knows <laughs> Kelly. We're getting, ready to, we're getting ready to pick Kelly's brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need to be working on, um, you know, we, we, we are a multifaceted thing here, the kayak and the hike and the bike, and we don't have any other biker people, the millers ain't here tonight, but um, the jeepers, the gearheads, and we need, there's a component missing from what we've been doing that is extremely important economically. And 
I know a lot of you already know that I'm working on the Heart of the Dragon trail and uh, that incorporates the motorcyclists and the four-wheelers. We need a run out in Kelly's area. We need a four-wheeler run. We need to start promoting that, get people out on these four-wheelers, having some fun and cutting up because everybody's passing this up around us. The communities around us, Knott County, Pike County, they're passing us up. Rush is well established. Mm -hmm. And they don't have me. Yeah, I'm going up there next week. Yeah. Well established. The EB. They got several runs up there. Some guy that I guess runs that rush off the road. Yeah, they were all out where I live. You know, they're not, you know, not developed yet. Right. So that's, but uh, before we even get to that development stage, we've got to start organizing a couple of runs to get people out and get the, get the, the chatter going about it. Because everybody goes, if you're on Kelly's end, Kelly, where do they go run on your end? Where do they go ride? Um, Morgan, McGough, Johnson, the Jenny Wiley Trail. The Jenny Wiley Trail. Uh, then on my end of the county, out at Boone's Camp, everybody's on Breezy. Everybody and their brother locally knows about riding these places. Jenny We've Wiley Trail on Breezy. Uh, We've got a trail ride going, son. Yep. Um, we, we've got to pull these four-wheeler groups out, get them out, get them engaged, get them part of it, because um, economically speaking, that's going to be a huge component of what we're trying to do. And we've not done a whole lot as far as organizing a run, organizing a trail ride for four-wheelers. And the reason we've not done is because of liability. Liability has been a huge issue. Uh, Johnson County is one of the counties participating in the Kentucky Mountain Regional Recreation Authority. What that does is provides us a little bit of liability leeway. Because we're participating in that authority, we can, uh, you know, advertise that we're participating in that authority and get private landowners to open up some of their lands that they previously wouldn't because of liability. It's a no-brainer. Nobody wants to be responsible for somebody getting injured on their property. So the way this has went down in other areas and the way it's going to go down here, because we don't have any other way to do it, is waivers. That's how it's going That's to start. It. It's how the same it's, thing at, at my place. It's yeah. the same thing there. It's the same thing in the waiver. gorge. It's the same thing over at Spearhead in Virginia. The same thing at Hatfield McCoy. Waivers are involved, and people who come are, have their own vehicles insured, they have their own things insured, your Jeep, Jeepers, they all come, they're all insured, um, and that absorbs the majority of that liability. So once you get past that, then it's to the part that I like, it's the fun part, it's the planning the party. <laughs> so um, we need to start planning a run, and that's why I want Kelly to be here tonight, because out where he's at, uh, does everybody know Kelly? First off, Kelly, introduce yourself. Kelly Conley, uh, owner of Kelly's Radiator Service. You might know me from that. And He's a whole bunch of other stuff. No, I, I never drove up that barrel <laughs> concrete. Uh, yeah. I never drove up that barrel concrete. I've been up here. Yeah. Used to do a lot of four wheeling, a lot of motorcycle riding. Kind of slowed down a little bit. But he might be getting a little out of his beard. Yeah. <laughs> <Not to worry. laughs> uh, Kelly's done a little bit of everything, but what Kelly does so well that, that enticed me to approach him to be our merchant chairperson is he's a businessman. And uh, he is the prime example that doesn't have to live in town and wear a tie to be successful because he's extremely successful and has always been successful in everything he's ever endeavored. Um, he's not. You'd look at Kelly and go, hmm, well, I don't know. It looks kind of wild. It looks like a wild man. But he's incredibly intelligent businessman. Not hardly a suit. Huh? Not hardly a suit. Not hardly a suit. But he's got all those, uh, he and his wife Paula are co-chairing now for Trail Town Merchant Chairs. And the reason being is they're, they're business acumen. They're extremely uh, good business people. Okay. And when we start developing these trails out in the county, out in uh, Oil Springs, Keaton, uh, Booms Camp, Greasy, Christ Town, you know, River out in, out away from town, we have to have these people that are, are key in their communities that know the people that live in their communities, so that we can pull other people in, other resources to help us. Because we this is not a one person or a five person show. It's going to take us all doing it 
to, uh, it's going to take a little while. It don't happen overnight. Don't forget that. Josh, you can, you can talk about that all day long about it doesn't happen overnight. I guess the biggest thing I see is from looking at it, like 50,000 feet, is once you get all those releases, um, I worked in Mingo and Logan County when the Hatfield McCoy Trail happened. Um, my grandmother actually, my great grandmother owned a, piece of, a large piece of property near where the former headquarters used to be and they moved when the new four lane came through. They developed an authority to manage the influx of people coming in so they were kind of the entry point to of course uh, West Virginia helped with legislation and those types of things creating the authority but there still has to be that, um, and I'm sure you've all addressed it, that, that one-stop entity where said person comes into town and they want to ride yep. XYZ trail and just, just uh, someone managing that um, influx of people because even though someone signs a waiver, there needs to be you know tracking of that. And probably, I would assume, I've never ridden the Hatfield-McCoy trail as a individual I did as a media member which was totally different but I assume you have to sign additional paperwork and those types of things so I mean obviously that didn't happen overnight I mean I, I, that was probably a 10 to 12 year project when you think about it from uh, from start to finish and their very first director uh, Mark Witt was a very good or is a very good friend of mine and his brother Mike was very involved in getting that project done from the Williams and West Virginia Redevelopment Authority so you're setting on something special, and I always use Gilbert, West Virginia as an example, and I don't know if any of you all have been to Gilbert when it was a coal town. Uh, it was very much a, a dying town, and then the trail system didn't really come in there. It came around it, um, and a very good friend of mine, he's deceased now, Jerry Miller, uh, built cabins on his property, and, and, and what, what they learned was is that the ATV riders didn't want to, and I know we're in a hotel, but they don't really, they'll stay here if they want to, but if you give them a choice to stay here and out in a cabin, uh, you know, you know, near the trail, um, that's where they're going to go. So Gilbert, you know, eight or ten years ago, had like 60 licensed businesses in their downtown. And, and they were dying. And, and Gilbert's not much bigger than... Main Street of Paintsville. I mean, it's literally, you know, you're on 52 and you blink and you miss it. So, uh, I would encourage you to visit, not the Gatlinburgs and places like that, because uh, I tell folks we don't want to be. I don't want. To, I don't want Johnson County to be uh, Gatlinburg. I want it to be Johnson County, be something unique. But, but I would encourage you to go to Gilbert uh, and places like that that have um, seen a downtown revitalization. Um, because of literally trails when you think about it. They have a golf course and a community center and stuff like that, but literally uh, their bread and butter is, is trails. And so is Man, West Virginia, which is the town I was born in. So I would encourage you to, if you want to see what's possible, uh, drive to those communities and then just, just know that if it was your business person, if it's if, 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 if owning a business was easy, everybody would do it. I was talking to a person the other day in Martin County that's getting ready to open a business, and that's exactly what he said. It's not easy. but So this is not easy, and there'll be a lot of people say you can't do it. You have to you know, accept that and use that as motivation to do it. So uh, we got something special here. Uh, if you can't recognize it, I would question your sanity. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we go, you know, this weekend we're going to... Whitesburg for the Levitt Amp launch. Uh, we're involved in that project. I work for SOAR, by the way, which is Southern Appalachian Region. Then we're going to Whitesburg Saturday in Harlan to the Poke Salad Festival. Yeah, I'm always. I love Poke Salad Festival. Uh, I've never been there, so oh, we're going to Whitesburg and Harlan tomorrow. Okay, so I'm. You're going to love the festival. We just, we just go and do yeah. special things like that. And I'm traveling to Rush Off Road and uh, doing some work down in Middlesbrough and that, and that area. So I see a lot of different things, but what I'm seeing is is people really recognizing uh, not necessarily the beauty of where we live, but the assets around it, which is all of you all are here tonight that are going to make it happen. So the potential, I mean, if people move into this area, where would you want to move? If you had never been here before and you were working in one of those places, where would you, where would you like to move? 
Paintsville's one of those places mm -hmm. I think it would be on the list. Oh, you know, gosh. Prestonsburg would be on the well, list. Not just that, but it could be a place where the people who live north and south can come to do their you know, re-election. And, and there's things here you can't do in, a, in, a, in an urban environment. So the people that are living in the cities, where are they going to go on Saturday when they want to just take a day to get away and go to a park or go to a lake or take a trail or drive my Jeep somewhere? Where are they going to go? Why can't they come here? So mm -hmm. you just got to... You, know, you just got to think that way of just how everything plays into everything else. And really, no matter what you're doing, if you're recruiting large business in and you're developing a trail, we're all on the same thing, trying to get the same, same result. Thing. Thank you very and, much. And it's, it's just, um, and I'm a proponent of that. I mean, that's, uh, I see it. If anybody follows me on Facebook, I'm in a unique place just about every day sharing the good. And you're talking about the gorge. I would encourage you to go to the Chocolate Inn in Beattyville. This young man lived in Japan, brought his wife back here from Japan, and uh, thought they were gonna go live uh, on the West Coast because of her Asian culture. She could be around, you know, stores and stuff like that. She came to Beattyville for the first time, fell in love with the place, and they, uh, they remodeled an old motor lodge from the 60s, and they have a gourmet coffee and pastry shop and a, a motel uh, in Beattyville. I it's a wonderful place. It's pretty cool. It's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful I mean, it's a wonderful place. So, but I mean, that's what we have here. And, and, and Dustin may only have two or three jobs there, but that's that's two or three jobs. And those are, Dustin's going to stay there come heck or high water because he's from there, just like you're from here. And you yeah. probably kept your businesses open yeah. when times were really tough. And, and you all need a seat at the table too, because you're you're just as much the future of the region as somebody bringing in 900 jobs. So a big part of our, our success is going to be our uh, our nature and our authenticity and our uniqueness, and we got that. Space. You we know, one thing too, I, I, I don't care. I remember, you know, I'm not. I wasn't born here. I've been here most of my life. When I was a kid, we came from Ohio. About 50 years ago, Jimmy wanted to make a change in place. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was full of. Sorry, I'm late. Okay. And they had um, a, a chairman there. They had an animal kingdom up there. They had all this stuff. So, I mean, it was big at one time. There's no reason why some of these other places can't get big again because there's more people now. And, like you said, like he's saying, there's jobs here and jobs there. So, we are in a real good area. And can't feel like it. Paintsville Lake is really hard it's to be in. It is. We had our laid back on the lake, our first one, and last year we were kind of used to, you know, little crowds. Twenty. A few people would show up, and it was cool, and everybody kind of hang out with this music. Our first uh, laid back on the lake this year, probably during the day, in and out, 400. Oh, it was packed. It was I, packed. I'll tell you, I thought there were people everywhere. I thought there were like, what's going on? Going over there. And we were always at the same shelter. And I was like, maybe she. That one was on the book. So I kind of like snuck over there and looked, and there was the sign that said, Trill. And I was like, well, oh, this, is, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, she, she's like, I, I think maybe somebody else said that. <laughs> but no, it wasn't. It was, oh, my God. So we expected that. Yeah. Yeah. We just had. It's been really hard over this past winter, and it's particularly hard right now because it's a political year. So the political climate is a little bit dampening on <laughs> on what you know uh, the spirits of folks are, and and but that's going to pass. You know, it, it, November will be here before you know it, and whoever, whoever <coughs> we can all be friends again. Yeah. And. Um, but so we just have to keep that morale up and, and keep living in those moments of 400 people wandering in and out and still being engaged and wanting to see something happen here. We just have to keep that momentum going and, uh, and grow on what they're enjoying about coming here and partnering with other people in our region. That's super, super, super important. It, it doesn't seem like it is, it's, and the nature of folks sometimes is to want to be separatists, especially here, but it's really important for us to go and visit these other places in our region and be supportive, and then they come and they visit us, and together we grow this network of region that will sell to the country, that will sell to everybody in the country and internationally. Um, a real good example of that is Elkhorn City. 
go over there when they turn the water loose and those people are over there white white rafting and walk around and shake hands and listen to some music and see where them folks are from. They're from everywhere in the world. I met two people from Norway within 10 minutes of being there. <laughs> so it's really, really, really super important that we get out and support each other uh, and figure out what, what it is that we can do to help each other get this done. Now back on back on track on the four wheeler. Kelly, do you think you could probably help us get a group together to go out there and ride the Jenny Wally Trail? Yep. When? I'm thinking late July. That's when a lot of that's a kind of a doldrum. It's a dog days kind of section of the summer when people don't have a lot of things planned to go on, but they're still looking for things to do. Yeah. You know that uh, you can start in Oil Springs and go plumb the cave run. I know. It's kind of cool to think about. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And there's a and plus whenever they get over there riding, they'll have to understand that they are uh, the most of the trails uh, join the lake property, and they probably don't want to get caught on the lake yeah, property. Do not want to. We would have to map it out almost to make do like a loop. We need to, to make a run, a trial run, yeah. and see how it Well, goes. there's ways to go around it, but there's going to be people that knows they can go through there, mm -hmm. and they're going to go, they're going to chance it. We can't but, enforce anything. But they like always that. have, haven't they? I mean, yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah they always have. And we talk. We talk. You'll get away with it, not talk to them. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying, it's real close to it, and the people would have to understand that. Listen, you're not supposed to be over there. You can be here, but you can't be there. Yeah. But then you're going to have people that rides it every weekend, and they're going to well, shoot them. Yeah, they might make the group look like they're. Uh, we don't want. We don't want to do anything like that. We want to keep everything as as positive as we can possibly keep it. We have a really great working relationship with the state and the federal cars. When we rode, most of the time, what we'd do is when we brought people in here out of Ohio and places like that, we would try to go to where we didn't have to backtrack and. We'd we could put on 80 to 100 mile in a day if we kept moving, but a lot of them had to stop, have their beverages, and hey, take hey, time and talk about what they just went through. Most people like loops. They, they like don't want to have to go around. They want to go around. There's some places you have to cross back across, well, but then there's a lot of trails that you never touch, and then they can come back and ride that one another day. Can you get us out there and, and show us a loop that we can possibly promote for uh, yeah, okay. probably the best thing to do is maybe just uh, get on the internet and show it and then make a map. There's all kinds of I landmarks. Can, I can do that. She's Rock got this. Map. She's got this software she uses for our trails that uh, we put our trails in called All Trails. Yeah. And we try to keep everything in one place, our kayak trails, our bike trails, our hiking trails, so that when we promote it to everybody else that had outside of Johnson County, that they can go to one place and find everything. Usually it'll take about all day. That's what we want, a day long run. Make the loop. And then maybe close out the close out the end of the loop with a little party. Some music. We got a ton of talent around here. Absolute ton of talent. Depending on how many that shows, um, you could do it several different ways. You could, everybody could park there at the school. There's going to be some blacktop riding involved with that. We all know that Kelly owns the Oscar out there, the school where the Oscar is, right? The old Old Springs old School. Old Spring School. Well, Got a right. gymnasium perfect for music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, there's a big parking lot there that a lot of people already park there and unload, ride their bikes and side to sides and stuff, which there's little blacktop involved there or if they go to the head of Hargis there I've got several farms there that everybody can just park on and you're right in the heart of it and you just start riding. That sounds like a plan right there. Yeah. That sounds yeah like either one I mean blacktop yeah. riding. Do you all know anyone know of a are you already on the event checker? Does anyone know of any events at the end of July that if we plan something we would be in um, competition with? We don't want to yeah. dampen anybody else's schedule on Facebook, but most people don't go that what far. What about the third fans, weekend so. of July? The third weekend? That's like the... It's, it's kind of a good time because, like I say, it's in those dog days when people, a lot of organizations don't have things planned. 
But outdoors people are looking for stuff to do. Oh yeah, yeah. people that uh, didn't go on vacation for the fourth, they're probably looking for something. Looking for something to anything. Yeah. So third weekend in July. Sound like a good time? I'm waiting on input. I'm look, I'm looking at you, Wayne. <laughs> the only thing I can think of in any kind of conflict would be the cruise in. The cruise in is the third weekend in July. Yeah. Third Saturday of the month. Oh. But the people that's going to do the trail ride. Wouldn't necessarily be doing the car right. show. But we don't yeah. want to compete with anybody. That's what I was going to say. I don't believe that would be good at all. Because then there's people that uh, even uh, <coughs> the people yeah. that would go and show their vehicle off, they'd still like to be riding. Yeah. yeah. And we don't well, want to what conflict about the with anybody. Week of July, though? Yeah, Jeep days. Jeep days, yeah. Or like, even if you did do it, the <coughs> third weekend, do it, like, start early in the morning and have it to where you can be back at like 4 o'clock, that way they can still do both. Yeah, you don't we couldn't do it. We couldn't get it done. <laughs> 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 you could probably ride in the morning, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Because some of the people are driving their cars, want to get them back home, and then yeah. it'll be, yeah, be a conflict. Yeah. Or do it on Sunday. What's the last week at, the last weekend in July look like? Yes. Most. Nothing scheduled. I plan to promote so the far. dog snot out of this four wheeler run because it's we've not done it yet. So this you is our. I'll tell you what. You know when I first started developing my property out there, a friend of Jim Booth's that works hand in hand with Jim Booth, and this has been two years ago, came over to look at my property, and the first thing he said, he said, you know where the money is and where the tourism is, is right. the four wheeling trails. He said they're going crazy. He really did. After. Yeah. Um, after Tucker appointed me to that position, he sent me out to check things out. And I went and rode Hatfield McCoy, and I went and rode Spearhead. I'm telling you, folks, yeah, it's fun, it's but they don't have near what we got. They don't, <laughs> they don't have what we got. Even they got Rush, Rush, even I've Rush don't have what we got. I've been going, the only reason that we even went to Rush was there was a hill over there that they said nobody ever went up on a four wheeler. Three pole. And we was over there, and me and Chad, my brother, had got out in front of everybody. <laughs> And we was riding way over through there, and we stopped on top of one of them hills and looked back, and they was all sitting over on top of the hill. Uh, well, they broke down. We're going to have to go back. Well, we turned around, and we ride and ride, and we get up on top of this next little hill, which it was shorter, so we could still see them. We get up there to the top of it, where they're at, and we just pull over there and said, what's wrong? They said, well, you just climbed it. They said, climb what? Climb what? Three pole. This is three pole. You just come up here. And, you, you know, know we didn't even know that that's what we went to ride. Was, they ain't been the hardest, have they? Uh -uh. And listen, we had stuff that over there, we were still trying to climb it. Yeah. yeah. We, I went and rode those trails, and uh, most of those trails that uh, last year Hatfield McCoy made roughly $23 million. Roughly. Um, <laughs> That's, the, that's a lot of money, folks, and most of their trails are super short and super contrived. They're not really fun. They're what we would consider, you know, not much because it's not what we're used to. We're used to riding trails. Yeah. And uh, we have 100 times more potential than they got for really getting the thrill seekers in here and the people that really like trails, Jeeps, four-wheelers, kayaks, biking, I don't care what it is. We've got more potential here. We're not, it's not something we have to build. It's already here. It's uh, what the tourism professionals call the low hanging fruit. It's already here, you just gotta pick it. Yeah. Yeah. So once you, you go and you see these other trails, you, you can see what Kelly's talking about and I'm talking about. Brian, people that, that's been out and experienced it. They're not all that, and they're making all that money. So we got all that. We can certainly make yeah. all that money. We would go to it, and then we'd think like, wow. We was searching for wow. something that yeah. was a little better than what we already had. No. Nah. And we wasn't finding it, but we would still go. Well, yeah, because they, they had trails that were open. So we yeah. just needed to create that here. And there's even uh, out there around the house, there's trails. There's always... A senior citizen trail. You can get around the hard mm -hmm. stuff, or you can sit there and work on it all day long and try to climb it for the thrill seeker. Yeah. There's mud or deep mud. Everybody likes mud. Then there's mud you can get through, but you've got to figure out which one of them is. <laughs> <laughs> all them holes don't look deep. <laughs> That's what the fun is. You don't know what you're in them. 
Yeah. Got me in there. Yeah. I've been talking with the girls of uh, of uh, Wild Women, the outdoors group of ladies that are doing uh, the TV show now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're looking for places to come and, and adventures to have as part of uh, of that. And um, I don't think they are a very reputable group of ladies. It's not an exploitation kind of a thing. It's a let's see what you got kind of a thing. And they're going to do a float on the tug, and hopefully before the summer's over, we're going to have them floating over here on um, our Chattawa Trace Trail float. And it would be exciting to get them out on our other our other trails, especially our four-wheeler ones where they like to get muddy. They really <laughs> love it. They go to rush and get muddy. Oh, yeah. So um, last weekend in July, there's nothing planned? No, not that I can see. Oh, and what's the date on that? Uh, 29th. Um, the Saturday is the 28th. The 28th. Uh, can we put it together by the end? Kelly, you're the, the expert on that. The 28th. Out there. July yeah. 28th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. July the 28th. Do you have a place out there where they could have a camp over experience if they wanted to have it that night? A place where they could set up some tents and camp? Mm -hmm. I know you did. I'm just asking for, for everybody else's benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is the name of the road right there beside the school? Uh, 580. That's what I thought. Okay. And it runs into what uh, would be 1409, and it's right at the end of the blacktop at 1409. Mm -hmm. Yeah. probably went out there, drove around, looked at it. Is that the old liquor store down? Where's that, to, you know, we used to go to that store and go back to Hell's Hell. Yeah, that's that's in Goblin County. As soon as you go past Bobby Jack's Liquor, you yeah. turn right-handed. Yeah. And that goes over into M the yeah, Stone, the stuff you're talking where about. the quarry is. Yeah. That's where all this ride would end up. That, that's a beautiful MJM ride. Stone is basically right in the center of it. That's, yeah, that's, that's some real pretty stuff. Yeah, it is. It's so gorgeous. We, we've we've repelled off every cliff you can see. It's right in the edge of the lake <laughs> property, so they got to be careful. Right. But there's ways to well, do it. Well, I mean, I've never seen them patrolled. I've worked out there years ago. They don't, they don't really patrol out there. They're, they're there. Just wildlife people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just the wildlife people. Yeah, but I don't think they can arrest a four wheeler. Well, they've got quite a bit of jurisdiction. Yes, they can. They can't confiscate they 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 it. Uh, uh, the way I understand it, the uh, game wardens have more authority than a state police or a DOD. Yeah, I think that's but that's that's on the water. So I know they can get in their car and chase it. Yeah. All right, I don't want to keep everybody. Uh, just a couple more things to cover. We've got upcoming events. This Saturday is hiking in the outdoor classroom. We are partnered with the Department of Forestry on that one. The same folks that helped us with our Arbor Day celebration are going to help with tree identification. So if you got kids and you want to bring them out and let them figure now, can out. Can you still drive back to that? To the outdoor classroom, yes, you can. And as a matter of fact, one of our partners with Trail Town is uh, Officer David Jackson, who is the Army Corps. I know. You know David. Yeah. Okay. Nice guy. And he is actually on the, the track committee with Andrea. Okay. And they are out. They were going to go out today and mow it, but it's been a little bit rainy, so they probably won't get it until tomorrow. But it's going to be nice mode. Come out and uh, this is a real kid-friendly event. Get the kids out to learn about plants and trees because that, that information is not being passed on generationally like it used to be. Um, then we'll do the hike, which is a nice, easy hike. It's not strenuous at all. It's got some pretty scenery when you get out to the water. Does it lead to the water? It goes out to those big rocks. Right, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. And then after the uh, after the hike, because Trail Town is all about experiences and creating some, some good vibe, we are having a <laughs> nature meditation session. Yeah, I don't know what this is exactly. We're all going to be sitting around yoga and around a fire or something. I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm all about it. I'm all about new experiences and creating experiences that our visitors that come here might enjoy. So that's what we're trying to do. The the hike is June the 2nd. We're starting at 5. So what time it says there? It's an evening. Saturday. Saturday. So it's not during the day. It's in the evening. Okay. So we're going to down. Because there was going to be a long time with the meditation and everything. Right. We wanted to do it so it ended up dark. But it's all kid-friendly. Yeah, 
including the meditation. We have a meditation master. She's a master reader. Reiki. 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 So I don't know what that is, but she's a master yeah. of this meditation thing. Yeah. I don't so, know either. She well, just well, asked. That Reiki <laughs> stuff is that's the way you can massage, but they don't touch you. Yeah, it's massage with no touch. Yeah. I don't know how that works. It's an energy thing. It's okay. an I don't know, but, but it, it, we're about trying to create that vibe of being a destination here. So there's a lot of people that travel and go to these places and they want all kinds of experiences. So 6.30 to 9 is what's up here. We're all about providing experiences. A little something for everybody. A little something for everybody. Do you like to be massaged and not touched? <laughs> Come on out! Then <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, let's see, June the 17th is our first of the season river run kayaking legend outfitters is helping us with that our hometown outfitters the slums are not available they had something else they couldn't they just couldn't make it happen so our partners in lawrence county legends that helped us last year are going to be helping again this year you can contact them anybody that asks you these questions <coughs> contact them on facebook uh, book a kayak if you need one, book a shuttle service if you need one. Anybody that needs shuttle service, we will make sure they have it. Um, the river runs going from the water plant out to Tim Price Landing. I talked to Tim today. Anybody that wants to camp, he has the only open campground for no fee anywhere on the river. Anywhere. Clear from the beginning so, to the end. And I'll be second. And you'll be the second. Introduce yourself real quick. Well, I'm Ken Hitchcock. Me and Kelly go back a long way, <laughs> but I live right at the Johnson Lawrence County line. I've got a 60 acre farm there, a six generation farm. Right across from my green cast. Yeah, uh, right up in that hall. My relative. Huh? She's one of my relatives. Oh, okay. But anyway, I live up in that hall. Yeah, okay. Um, and I started to open up a pay lake. I've got about a two acre lake. and. I don't know. I want something family oriented. I just don't want that type of traffic yet. So we've kind of we've made our campground. We put our lights up. We've got just about everything ready to open. And I love my peace, you know. <laughs> so, so. But I mean, not that you know. I want a peace like family oriented. Is what I want. You know. I don't. So we took our time, but we've got our campground. You know, um, hopefully I'm gonna have cabins up on the hill there. Um, this is exciting stuff, folks. Y'all listen yeah. to this. But I, you know, I'm, I'm five miles from Jenny Wally's grave, and I promote. Uh, you know, 20 years ago I was here trying to promote the history. Mm -hmm. You know, because like I said, I'm on a sixth generation farm, and I just, you know, we do have a lot here. And you know, our kids is like. Let's go here. Let's go here. I want to go to Florida. And I said, we're not going to Florida. We're going. And I've been dragging them around since yeah, I heard that. Like, I'm going to be fish. Well, yeah. She wants to stay in fish. So. And we've got that. So we've got a two-acre pond there. And so. so but it joins two campgrounds on the river. Well, that? Is that close to Old Preston's Pilot? Yeah. I'm right between Bob's and uh, Preston's. And so I'm like, on the river side of Martin yeah. County, Johnson Lawrence. I mean, and tri-state as well. But like you said, you know, if you're going to open a business, you want to make sure that it is perfect. You don't want to half open it. So that's another reason why I just, You've been you been laying back, take your time. Yeah. You know, I, you know, yeah. So I just, but, uh, you know, and it's just me. I have, you know, it's just me and I've got twins. And, and so it's a little bit hard to do. You have to really make sure you have the... The backbone to help you. And then again, like I was telling about Josh's thing and about their thing, about um, Brian's thing, is that Kelly's, and is that we promote each other, that we are talking and talking this stuff up. Yeah. Because when she gets ready to open, Mike Brown is working on his place on the Dawkins. When he gets ready to open, we are going to uh, have so much to offer in this this little group of communities that it's going to be insane. We, we could bring folks here, a family of people here, and keep them here a week and entertained. There's everything. I hope so too, because that's one of the real struggles is the volunteer base. Everybody's busy. They don't have time. Okay, back to the 17th that we were talking about. 17th, River Run. What I wanted to know is, okay, last year, it was a bit confusing because everybody parked their main vehicles up there at the water plant and 
So as soon as they got there, we were supposed to eat and have music, but they needed to get back to the cars. Was she going to change that to where people could get up there and just leave their cars at 10 o'clock? Yes. Uh, Tim has opened up. Because I think that would make all the difference. Yeah. yeah. Tim has opened up his entire bottom up there. His only, his only thing is don't leave the gate open and let the bull out pick up your own garbage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah and, and volunteers will, I think, will yeah, continue be, to take care of go that. Go there, sure. park your vehicle, leave the back. back. Yeah. But the thing is, do we have someone that is able to take some of the kayaks from yes. there? Yes, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah. We have two volunteers with two 16-foot trailers to haul kayaks. Okay. Now, I have a, a trailer that I could get to two or three big ones on top, and then if they're short, uh, they actually pull work inside. So if needed, if you would let me know a day before, if, well, I could possibly bring, I, I live very close to Tim Price's place. Right. So I could come down there with the trailer, and then take over, because I want to ride the river this time myself. Yeah, and then, uh, that's what I was gonna say, uh, not just promote it, come out and enjoy it with us, come out and do this. Yeah, because it's an easy, it's, it's an, an easy, easy run. And, easy. Uh, I've never actually been on that session, so I'd like. It's two to little gel shells. It's fun. Yeah. And, and then we July fourth. And then July four fireworks. Yeah, back on the lake. July fourth is laid back on the lake again. Our second one, and uh, as far as I know, it's the only local music thing going on on the fourth. They're going to be renting the kayaks out of the marina. She's going to have a food special out there. We're also going to have a food special for Trail Towns and approved by the state so we can do some fundraising for ourselves. We've got a kayak raffle coming up. We need to sell tickets for So what are you going to do? Cook hot dogs here? Hot dogs. Yeah, hot dogs really sell. We're going to put them on the grill there. Hey, hey, sir, you just came. We can probably get some volunteers on there. I love ideas. Hey, well, she gave us an idea. I will take all the credit. Um, on the four-wheeler run, I'd I'm a, already started asking around, and I've already found two, but I'd like to do pig roast out there, because that kind of ties in. That's kind of a, a four-wheeler kind of thing, pig roast. So, I have... Since you was going to have your table and friends, would you like to have some food, too, on that Friday? Sure. We can sell hot dogs. We can sell hot dogs. Raising it on, sister. Raising it on. What day was that? Bring it. The 28th of July. 28th. Isn't that National Beer Drinking Day? <laughs> national Beer Drinking Day. It may be every day is National Beer Drinking Day for some people. Not on the lake. Argus. Every day is Beer Drinking Day. Oh, yeah. This is afterwards. So on the river run, we're going to be selling food out there, too. We're having soup being supper after the river run. Because we have found out, we thought all these river run kayak and people were super health conscious. No. They want sweets <laughs> and Mountain Dew and lots of food. Yeah, they want more food than you can imagine. We had a whole cooler of water, and I put my whole pack of Mountain Dew that I had in my cart, and I put one Mountain Dew in the cooler. That came back for herself. Water. And I put another one in the cooler, and it was gone. And, and then we had people coming up, can you get a small Dew? I got out my cart in there, and then ended up having a box. And that's another thing, folks, authenticity. We found out a lot. We learned a lot last year. We were trying to uh, trying to maybe make it just a little nicer and trying to, you know, be at the same level as something you would experience in Pigeon Forge or whatever. They're not looking for that. They're looking for Eastern Kentucky. They want to experience Eastern Kentucky. And if that's Mountain Dew and Soup Bands, that's what, they, that's what we're going to give them. <laughs> we're going to give them Mountain Dew and Soup Bands. Well, I do remember uh, just a few years ago, right across the road from there, you know, the River Pop uh, volunteer was raising some funding. So what they did was they went around to all the neighbors and said, uh, we need five dollars. Next Saturday we're going to bring you cornbreads and see, bring you yeah. fried taters and onions. And I was like, I don't even eat that stuff. And I thought, you know what, they're going to sell they're going to try it. So I said, yeah, sure, bring a couple. Anyway, they brought that and I was like, man, would you guys do this next week? <laughs> I was like, you should do this. I mean, I would, if you come here every week, I would give you the five dollars. And bring me some same <laughs> I feel like I'm blessed here, you know. So I mean, well, it, it is, can be good, especially those those fried taters. I mean, just the whole it's, it's the whole thing. It's selling what we are, and that's what we are. Yeah. That's Sunday supper around here: is soup, beans, and fried taters. I didn't think I liked it. Well, you found out, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. So, uh, especially if you're hungry. <laughs> try to to get on the page and share those events. Share, 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 share. Yeah. And then if people's got questions and you don't know the answers, direct them to any of us that, you know, we're helping plan it 
Uh, Kelly's not on Facebook. He's don't do Facebook. Can you imagine a guy like that that don't do Facebook? Yeah. The store. The store does Facebook. The store has got Facebook. And um, the shops has got Facebook. I don't do them, but the always, William Cantrell keeps up with the one at the radiator shop and Trish Me. Yeah. Uh, Trish Dollar Hyde. She yeah. takes care of the one at the store. I'm trying to drag her in. I love Trish. I'm trying to drag her in. Yeah. Because she's got such good ideas. She really does. Uh, but you can get a hold of, uh, I'll give you an email address that you can get a hold of Kelly. He's on LinkedIn. He does yeah. on LinkedIn for his businesses. Uh, and I try to keep that pretty regular. Yeah. But. Try to communicate. Keep the ideas flowing. And Josh, is, he can tell you that's it takes it. We've got to keep the energy going. Keep the ideas flowing. Watch this SOAR page. Watch these SOAR events because maybe it doesn't pertain to you, but maybe it pertains to your family, or maybe it pertains to a person you know that's starting a business, or maybe it pertains to somebody in the tourism industry. Or, you know, something that we can generate more ideas, get more talk going, get more publicity for. It all plays together. All of it works together. We just have to, to uh, keep the morale up. Politics is going to pass. November is going to come and go. Mm -hmm. It's going to be over with, and then it's back to business as usual. We'll move on with what we've got and do the best we can do, like we've always done. If we've got one strength in Eastern Kentucky, it's persistence. We are some persistent people. And when we get something in our head, uh, we can make it happen. Yeah. We can absolutely make it happen. It's just a matter of doing. Now, will it be more announcements as to what time that group will take is going to start? It, we've already shared the page. I shared it this evening. Okay. I put it on there. Uh, I had to wait to make sure um, we were going to have parking out of Tim's and that our outfitters were good. So everything's right. good. It's shared. We're moving. Mm -hmm. okay. Brian's doing the music out there at the rear. With scratches. And he's got a, okay. it's a good setup. It's a cool, laid back place to be on the river with some music going on. Good times. Uh, William takes his Jeep through a lot of them. So, all right, you all, any questions? Kelly, what was you going to say? Tonight? I was going to say, like a while ago, where she was talking about, you know, you don't really want to start something until you're ready for everything. My goal about uh, six years ago, <laughs> you know, I've got right close to 800 acres right there. I've got 10 trailers that I could rent. And instead of people that didn't want to stay in a cabin or stay in something, I wanted to go like Florida, Georgia, places at the beaches and put ads out there or come to Kentucky yeah, and yeah. play with our trails over here. And I'm not hardly there yet, but I want to put little, right I just want little cabins, no electric. And what's it called, the Randa? Hmm? The thing that Antasha did? Oh, Airbnb. 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 You can list those on Airbnb. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted, just like these little, um, these little sheds. Amish cabins. Little Amish cabins yeah, just sitting there. I want to have electric but no water. But I'm building like a shower house up in the hallway where they can come out and take a shower and all that. But they can get air. Because you know sometimes they need that. Yeah. Take nothing to eat. You know, cool. Basically, uh, when we would go riding, all we needed was a place to build a bar yeah. and lay down. Sleep in the dirt? Kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So everybody keep in contact with everybody else, share it with everybody you know, um, engage engage yourselves. She sat over there and grinned the entire time. Did you see her smiling the entire time? Why were you smiling the entire time? Because it's exciting. It is. Yeah, it's exciting. You all, uh, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to holler. We'll try to figure out the answers together, okay?